إذ قال الله الله سيد قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفيك ورافعه لي ومطهرك من الذين كفروا وجعل الذين اتبعوك فوق الذين كفروا إلى يوم القيامة ثم إلي مرجعكم فأنحكم بينكم فيما كنتم فيه تختلفون the, 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 the divine counter plot was is that Allah said translate God, that God said Jesus I will cause you to die and raise you up to me and purify you from those who have denied the truth and I will exalt your followers over those who deny you until the resurrection day. Then you will, then you all will return to me, and I will judge between you in matters about which you disagree. Yeah, this is this is really a fantastic summary of that development until Yom Al Qiyamah. So it is summarized; doesn't give the details of this process, but this is also a lengthy process. It seems to be, according to the various narratives, that in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was, Isa was very worried and was uh, supplicating while the disciples were asleep, according to their narratives. I think it's in Matthew and also in Luke, but you can check it. You must have a copy of the New Testament or all of the Bible in, in, at home, so you can check these things. And then, uh, according to the narrative, two angels come to to to, uh, to pacify him and God. Uh, but, but the disciples were asleep. They did not know what was discussed with the angels as well. It seemed to be in that occasion, Allah gave him the information. You don't need to worry. I will face the transitions of I will cause you to die is wrong. I will receive you. That's, that's the correct translation because the tawaffa is receiving. And, and, uh, and uh, it has nothing to do. It could be death, could be something else. That's one point to, to, uh, to uh, you have to be cautious about translating. I am, going, I am going to receive you and lifted you up to me. So any of the fika, I'm going to receive you. What is kind of reception is that? Is it causing him to die and then lifting him up? Or is it, uh, or is it uh, su summarizing the process which will happen that, that he will be received, including also that lifting up, et cetera? I will try to explain that as best as I think from analyzing all the historic evidences and narratives. But the Quran says clearly the way the tawfa can be applied, be applied to the souls or the consciousness when you are asleep. Allah received the souls when you die, when, when the, 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 the people who have the soul die, and those who do not die in their sleep. So this has another type of reception. So it could be he caused him to sleep. But we know, my, I'll give you my, my theory. After this pacification, the traitor, Judas came, and they came obviously with a, uh, they came with a, with a good uh, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a cohort with a, with, a, with, a, with almost like like a battalion or a regiment of forces. You can assume that they come they came cautiously without torches in dark slowly so they can surprise the place and encircle it. As you can imagine that obviously, and this 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 uh, uh, this Roman. Uh, 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 regiment, is it, according to, to one one of the nafs, it is a cohort. Cohort is a big amount, it's about seven hundred. It's almost like a regiment and more than So it's a considerable force. And since you get so many is in the side in the in the side of a hill uphill, it's clearly if they came with torches and so on, they will be visible. So they came most like in the dark, slowly, without noise, approaching bit by bit. And the arrangement was that Judas will go in. When they come close, they can look like maybe 100 meter or 50 meter, they can see the windows, there may be a small, uh, a small light, uh, maybe an oil lamp or something like that burning there in the wall. Uh, it's very difficult uh, to, and Judas will go there. And then when he comes inside, they will charge forward and he will embrace Isa. To, so they could recognize the one who is embraced because they don't know at the time they didn't, uh, we didn't have photography, <laughs> we don't have IDs. So someone must do the IDing, IDing would be by Judas. So they charged in, apprehended almost everyone. Some of these were run away. But there are some reports that someone tried to fight, which is not clear if that's what is correct or not correct. Allah alam, it may be fabricated because they say that some one of them struck one of the of the temple servants because they, they were not only just Romans, they were Judas, and there were maybe some people sent as a company from the high priest. So the moment they upgraded him, they would be it would be officially handed over to uh, to the high, uh, high priest for trial and then later to the Roman for execution. That was the general idea, it seems to be. So when they charged in and he gave the so-called famous Judas, uh, Judas kiss. Most likely, 
Then in that moment, a so-called transfiguration happened. Judas took the shape and the clothing of Isa, and Isa took the shape and the clothing of Judas. That's my theory. That such a transfiguration is possible is actually happening once in the Old and New Testament in one occasion only with, for Isa himself. If you read Luke, I think it's in Luke, uh, uh, in, in, in one time he was with the disciples and then he told them, wait here or something like that and went uphill so that everyone can see him. And he met with two persons who came from heaven in the clouds. And the people, the writer or the reporter claims that the two words was Elijah and Musa recognized him from the description or he told them later that these two persons and then both all three persons including Isa became radiating like like the like the sunlight and they've transfigured completely and changed their shape and their clothing so a, such a transfiguration is recorded before so they have a model of what could happen anywhere and this this Allah's power extend to such a transfiguration there's nowhere in the old testament or the new testament any story or any situation of transfiguration in this situation it has no reason apparent it's just a demonstration of divine power for no reason whatsoever there's no reason which mandates or dictates uh, it should happen or should not happen you could have went uphill and met two persons coming from heaven and came back why the transfiguration i would argue this story seemed to be true Allah alam. And that was a model given to the people that something like that can happen and will happen in due course in a, a private situation. So that configuration has happened. They apprehended the wrong, the wrong man, apparently according to their eyesight, because they know Judas, he came with them. They know him very well, they know his dress, is in front of them, standing there. And they apprehended the, the one who the, was, was kissed by allegedly by, by Judas and took him. Now, in that moment, Judas obviously is the only one who knows what's going on. He sees clearly what's happening there. There's, there's no escape because he knows his own identity. Transfiguration externally does not transfigure your uh, internal consciousness. And he saw that, that he sees himself in front of him, himself externally, his image and his clothing, and looks at himself possibly and see that his clothes has changed and he can assume that this transfiguration or something like that miracles happened and obviously he's a state of shock and he's dumbstruck he's dumbstruck but he cannot say that he cannot tell the people who are apprehending him i am i am you that's i am not isa it's impossible nobody will listen so he remains silent and he remains silent according to the current gospels so you go the trial, even in one of them, the high priest asked him, man, are you not going to defend yourself? Are you not going to say anything? He didn't say anything. This is really indicating someone who is in a state of shock and who knows whatever he say will not be believed. Because the one in trial, who won't be interrogated by the high priest is Judas. But his look and appearance and clothing is Isa. And the high priest thinks this is Isa. So he did not say anything. And the story continues then, and obviously the, the story of uh, bringing him to the attention of, of uh, Pontius Pilatus and uh, some, some gospel claim that Pontius Pilatus claimed this had insulted and washed his hand. It's most likely fabricated to exonerate the Romans from the crime. This was later to put all the blames on the Jews, that even the Romans were not. But this does not sound very right for many reasons. First of all, Pontius Pilatus is a vicious Roman ruler. Secondly, I have verified through various uh, other evidences that this act happened in the year uh, 27, our uh, uh, Anno Domini AD. And 27, Pontius Pilatus just came a few months earlier and was very vicious and enforcing his authority with all arrogance. And even he, he, even he did not respect Jewish customs and so on. And there were certain incidents reported by Jews. So this man is not a man who was It's unlikely. So this is most likely a later publication. And even the fabrication goes even further in the Gospel of John, in which the alleged Jesus, let's call him the detainee, is discussing with, with Pontius issues of philosophical issues about good and evil. <laughs> Imagine someone condemned to die, <laughs> for example, to, to, uh, to Pontius Pilatus and discussing philosophy of good and evil. It sounds out loud, sounds clearly fabricated. I don't need really to spend much mental energy on that. Neither situation warrants, even if that would have been a Jesus himself. The situation does not warrant discussion of philosophy. And that's only in John, a clear fabrication. And this John is writing many things from his imagination, clearly, without any doubt, if we are having any objectivity. So, and then 
the evidence that 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 uh, that this, this, this the one who is in the cross is not Isa is that the fact he's remained silent. Obviously, Judas now recognized this this process of the trial and so on took about maybe one and a half day or something like that because it seemed to be the detention at Gethsemane was Wednesday evening. Then we have Thursday the trial was overnight and then uh, yeah. And then next uh, Friday morning, he was presented to Pontius Pilate allegedly. Maybe he was never even presented, but most likely because they need, need the order of the Roman governor for crucifixion. Crucifixion is a Roman and the accusation with that he's calling, he's appointing himself as a king and planning a rebellion against the Romans. The Romans don't care about religion or revelation, they care about power. So this man is a rebellious. Uh, and that's the reason also all, all evidences indicate that on the cross they wrote in the INRI. Jesus Nazarius Rex Eudorum. They wrote, wrote mockingly, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, as a mockery of the cross. So that was the accusation that he uh, he is claiming to be a King of the Jews and he's campaigning, campaigning to topple the Roman rule. Uh, rule. So that's it. On the cross, all the most of these reports and so on, most likely imaginary, because they, they in, in the in the in the in the synoptic gospels, the narrative is very clear that all the disciples have run away. And in one narrative that the women that were watching from far away. So whatever claim that happened at the cross, around the cross, is most likely from people's fertile imagination or from secondhand reports. But what is definitely quite embarrassing at the, everyone regard as, as they have to struggle to explain it is that in, in a moment, uh, in, in a later moment, uh, the alleged Jesus or the, the crucified one is called the crucified, the detained one, uh, screamed, Ilahi, Ilahi, Lima Sabachthani. That's in Aramaic. That's even uh, translated wordly like that, in which it shows this have a genuine origin. It is so, it's so well reported, and everyone hears it and it spread so widely that, that, that nobody can escape reporting it. That's the reason it's in the current gospel. It's extremely embarrassing. Say, Ilahi, Ilahi, Lima my, 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 uh, Ilahi, Ilahi, my, my God, my God, why did you forsake me? And then the narrative says then he screamed extreme with a high voice, screamed extremely in anger, obviously, and in pain, and then collapsed. And this, I, I would say, I would say anyone with medical background would recognize that is the, the man is was a combination of pain and suffering and the feeling being being a failure. He's definitely a failure if that's if that's you, that's the one at the cross. He recognizes he's that failure. And and then he's angry with him, so he, he doesn't know what to say. So he, as most people in such situation or some people in that situation, put the blame on Allah. Why didn't you prevent me from doing that? Uh, becoming jabari, becoming accusing Allah for his misery, not himself. Uh, you've forsaken me. If you have protected me from this failure, I would not have done that. I would not be in this situation. And then from a mixture of pain and extreme anger, he screamed loudly. And this is, and the collapse is obviously some kind of a, uh, let's call it a stroke or heart attack. But that's the best interpretation. And this fits very well with Judas on the cross rather than Isa on the cross. Secondly, corroborated by that, the, the disappearance of Judas is narrated in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament canon, three different narrations. One is that the famous one in Matthew, that he regretted what he did and went back and threw the, the 30 silver pieces to the, to the, to the priest and say, you, you instigated me to commit a major sin and so on, and he went and hung himself. That's one. Another narrative, which is the act of apostles and two different narratives similar to each other, which can be harmonized, is that, no, no, he, he, he took the money, bought a piece of land, and was, was supervising work in the land, and then he fell over the rocks and split his belly, or a car split his belly. So these two narratives cannot be, cannot be harmonized. One, one of them true, one of them false. I'm, I'm arguing both are false. People imagined either those stories to explain the disappearance of you that's completely from the web. And the explanation is very simple from my point of view is that on the cross, that's what has happened. So that's it. The Quran does not go into detail, not even if he in another place affirmed that it is that the non crucifixion happened and the, the case were mistaken, they didn't go into details. Let's leave it open for possible research for people to say whatever they want. And maybe some of it can be only really settled on based on other evidences who will come very much in later time. So there's no sense to offer this, this story in the Quran or any other story which cannot be having any, 
any independent or any verifications, the verification or the, 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 the possible affirmation of this camp stay maybe for centuries until our time. Although some of us have speculated similar things like that very speculation. Now, after that, the and also that fits also with 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 the with, with Isa allegedly saying the sign is the sign of the Yona, sign of Yonas, that Yona was three days in the belly of the of the whale. But this fits better with this with this description I made than the card said that he died and were in the belly of the whale, it says as in the earth dead. Because Yona was not dead, he did not die inside the well. So the sign of the Yona is that he will be secluded somewhere in a cave or in another place. And then after coming out, Yona came out, uh, uh, changed in color and sickly and needed to recover slowly. That's exactly what happened. So after that, uh, he started recovering, the transfiguration reversed slowly. And when he met with some of the disabled, they didn't recognize him at the first time and they were terrified. And later on, he went to Galilee and met them. And there was the ascension. So that's all that, but the, that, that the fact that what they call it resurrection is really a reappearance. So the, the reappearance happened gradually. And then the ascension happened then in Galilee. So Rafi'u Kailaya, the lifting up to Allah is definitely witnessed by, as Paul stressed that the resurrection and the uh, uh, ascension in heaven was witnessed by 500, 500 people because he did not witness personally, but he referred to all the disciples and 500 other people who were present and witnessed it. So I think I think we can say this 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 fact of what they call resurrection, which we, we, might, we must call it more neutrally, the reappearance and the ascension is for all uh, relevant purposes well established. And that's what the Quran says. I'm lifting you to me, and I will purify you from the cover of those disbelievers. Yeah. And then uh, an interesting point, which uh, maybe uh, uh, sometimes uh, 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 only uh, recent research has showed really the complete uh, uh, aspect of it is uh, I will make those who follow you above those who reject you until the day of judgment. So, what is this? I will be above those who, what, how is this happened? It seems to be that the, the early followers of Isa were prosecuted and were. were, were like uh, uh, expelled out of the land, etc. Later on, or they migrated out of the land before the destruction of the temple. So it doesn't they really seem to be they were dominant over the disbeliever who said this case that disbeliever are the Jews because he was sent to the Israelite and those who rejected them from the side are the disbeliever. And the reality is that now by historical research and various fragments here and there, and also reading Josephus and so on, it turned out that that uh, the, the the follower of Isa were able to enforce themselves and even attend to uh, attend, attend to to to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the temple against the will of the of the high priest and also his brother James Yaqub which the name Yaqub has been deformed in, in uh, through various uh, deformations linguistic into James was was the only one beside the high priest who was allowed to enter into the holy of the uh, all holy ones in a year and supplicate there and he used to supplicate on his knees until he, his knees became became like like camel knees, like well, from supplication and prayer. So they became dominant. They were able to enforce themselves out of disbeliever, disbelieving, and the, the clergy and the and the Israelite leadership were, were, was forced to to uh, accept their 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 uh, their presence and even their attendance and even their entry in the holy of the all holy. So to which only the high priest is admitted once a year, and James was admitted. That's the modern research I've shown that out. So that's the dominance over the disbeliever. Now, the, whoever uh, uh, follow Isa or claim to follow Isa has been through history always dominant over the Jews. And the ones who do not say from Bani Israel who reject them or the one who claim to be Jews, always, whatever you say through history, it was always like that. It was even in the story of the people of the Akhdud, when some Jews prosecuted some Christian there in, in the Valley of Najran, the, the Apizina interfered and defeated the Jews there and re restored the situation. So it was, uh, the, the, the Jews and the site who have never been dominant over the follow of Isa, disregarding what the belief of the follower Isa of him as being a prophet or being a divine or whatever, they have been always and essentially all the time 
uh, under them, and they have been. That is that's a history proof that, and what that is now and also in the future, uh, they will never be the dominance or uh, complete dominance or, or control, uh, as many people th think and dream that uh, that the Jews or the Zionists will control the Christians and guide them. That's not true. Even even the current Zionism is actually a Zionist one, is is actually an evangelical Protestant movement. But intend to dump the Jews there so that the coming of the Christ will be accelerated. So the dominance is always for the, well, the follower of Isa against the non-follower of Isa. That's how the way it should be interpreted. Mm -hmm.